Hey everybody, I'm Jennifer, and welcome to my first post of my new playlist on my existing uh, YouTube channel. The new playlist is going to be called Screw the Whiffs, Sticky Brain, Intrusive Thoughts, and How to Get Off the Hamster Wheel of Anxious Suffering and Sensitization. Sounds like a mouthful, but we'll break it down and over time have a lot of time to talk about all kinds of things. So screw the whiffs. What do I mean by whiffs? Whiffs are what I call the multitude of what-ifs that accompany an anxious state of mind. Let's just describe a few of them. What if I'm going crazy? What if I never feel like myself again? What if I'm having a heart attack? What if that doctor didn't know what he was talking about? What if I can't stop thinking this screwed up thought? What if I die? What if someone I love dies? What if I can't stop thinking about death? What if I hurt my child? What if I'm crazy for having that thought? What if I never feel at peace again? What if I have another panic attack? What if I always feel so strange? What if this depersonalization and derealization ruin my life? What if I don't like people? What if people don't like me? What if I'm actually a bad person? What if something happened to me in my past and I can't remember it? What if I did something in my past and I can't remember it? What if I lose control on this plane? What if I faint? What if I have a seizure? What if I'm too far away from a hospital and I need medical care? What if that test wasn't accurate? What if I always wake up in the morning feeling depressed, anxious, fearful, and uneasy? What if I can't get my mind to stop throwing me dark and disturbing thoughts? What if I get so sick I can't be around my family? What if I throw up in public? What if I need to pull over but I'm trapped in traffic? What if I lose my mind while I'm driving? What if I have a panic attack when I'm alone with my kids? What if these sick thoughts I'm thinking are actually true? What if I lose control and hit someone or scream something out loud? What if, what if, what if, whiff, whiff, whiff. These are the whiffs I'm talking about. And we're going to learn on this channel how to screw the whiffs, the mindset shift, the skills and strategies we need to be able to do that. Our almost 70,000 thoughts, I think much more than that, that we are said to have in any particular day. But when these 70,000 thoughts in a tired nervous system, tired sensitized nervous system, suddenly start to get our attention, it's like a roving security camera that now hones in, zooms in on a particular image, zooms in closer, stares at it. This is what happens to us. Over the course of a day, these 50 to 70,000 or plus thoughts that we have about anything. What if I push this person into the subway plat uh, platform? What if I jump off this cliff? What if I hurt my dog? What if I wanted to hurt my dog? What if I, all the th- what ifs I just mentioned and thousands of others, right? But suddenly as we're in a tired nervous system, sensitized nervous system, a disordered state of anxiety, another way to put it, we've, we've our, our security camera that was once kind of free flowing, our threat response system that was scanning our environment suddenly starts to misfire, malfunction, starts to zone in, zoom in. And the closer we look, the more we turn inward. The more we turn inward and we start to cre- create this scary story about this thought, this feeling, this urge, this sensation that we're having or had, the more we add anxious fuel to the fire in the form of cortisol and adrenaline. These are our stress hormones. And suddenly our small, relatively contained campfire has turned into a wildfire, an inferno. Our anxious symptoms are like the mogwai in the film Gremlins. Innocent enough at first, but then they begin to multiply the more we feed them, water them, or shine light on them. So in this channel, we're going to do a deep dive into the world of what it means to have a sticky brain, the nature of intrusive looping thoughts, as well as what keeps us on the hamster wheel and how to get the hell off of it. We'll explore the literally hundreds of physical, cognitive, emotional, and physical symptoms. Sorry, I already said physical. Physical, cognitive, and emotional symptoms that are common in a sensitized nervous system, otherwise known as disordered anxiety. Let's pause there for a minute. Disordered anxiety. We talk about having anxiety. People talk about having anxiety as a problem. Anxiety is not the problem. We actually need anxiety, which is our threat response system, to fire off an anxious response to keep us safe. Anxiety is what motivates us to leave our homes when the fire alarm sounds. It's what has, it's what has us jump back on the curb when we hear a loud beep 
a horn honk a few feet away. It's what has us carrying mace as we navigate the city at night. Anxiety in our threat response system is how we've survived and evolved all of these years. The issue is not anxiety. The issue is actually a disordered anxiety, a sensitized state. It's when we've had a symptom, maybe a panic attack or a bout of derealization, maybe a strange heart palpitation or a sense of feeling faint in a crowd. But instead of noticing and letting it go and moving on and just letting it flow through us, we start to turn inward. We begin to enter a staring contest at the scary or uncomfortable symptom, and we start to engage the whiffs. The more we engage and create a scary story with these whiffs, those mogwai morph into the gremlins, and they begin to multiply. And before we know it, we've actually lost sight of the fact that we had anything at all to do with why things got so out of control. By the time we're, we're this anxious, everything feels like it's being done to us. It feels automatic. The thoughts, the feelings, the sensations, our reactions to them, all feeling, that, again, that we're being done to us. We are not our anxious thinking. This was actually a new concept for me, the fact that we are not our thinking. I was one that was trained to elevate thought and to focus deeply on what my clients were thinking and feeling. If they thought and felt something, we needed to explore it. We needed to do the time warp and trace back looking for a root cause for an event or a situation, searching, analyzing, assessing, and evaluating. These were my superpowers with myself and with others. Searching, analyzing, assessing, evaluating, problem solving, fixing, hole plugging. Again, my superpowers. And then one day, I experienced my own bout of sensitization. And suddenly my superpowers became my weapons. All the things I knew to do the time warp, trace it back, search, analyze, question, assess, evaluate, problem solve, hole plug, fix. Suddenly I was getting sicker. And I spent the next several years in a nonstop research state, basically. Or should I say me search, right? Because that's often what we're doing when we're researching is it's me searching. Something's happened to us or somebody we love and we're desperate to find out what's going on and we do this deep dive. And I did this deep dive because I wanted to understand why my tools seemed to be actually making me worse. I came to understand that doing the time warp and searching for the magical unicorn that was going to somehow unravel the tangle that my mind had become was not only wasting my time, but was making me really, really sick. My thoughts got stickier, physical symptoms became louder, my world got smaller as I turned inward. I began to lose confidence in myself as I began to fear my own mind and my body. Any of this sound familiar? So this channel is the product of my own experience. It's the product of my having been a clinician for almost 28 years, now serving as a personal mentor, coach, consultant to those going through the same thing. It's the experience of so many people that I've met along the way. And it's the culmination of the skills, strategies, and the mindset that I had to not only be open to, even though it was against almost anything I knew or believed, but to also then learn how to practice these skills, these strategies, and these minds. It's over and over and over again in order to find my way back out of the cobwebs and the darkness and back into the light. That's the goal of this channel. That's the goal of Screw the Whiffs. So if any of this sounds relevant, if you are feeling like you're in your own dark night of the soul, you feel like your life has become chaotic and sticky and the cobwebs and creepy, then tune in and let's learn a little bit about this. Thanks for listening, guys.